there. How are you doing today? Do you feel like doing a little bit of holiday Dollar Tree DIYing with me today? Well, come on in. Let's get started. What do I have going on for you for today? Well, guess what? It's almost Halloween. Halloween is about eight weeks away. Am I somebody who decorates much for Halloween? I'm not, but I do like to decorate my porch. I think that that is such a fun place to decorate for Halloween for the trick-or-treaters or just for the delivery people who are coming and delivering our packages. I've been really into decorating my porch over the last year and a half and it's been fun. And each year I just feel like I wanna add more and more to my porch. And yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Today I'm gonna bring you some Halloween porch decor using items that you can find at Dollar Tree right now. These are quick, they're easy, they're budget-friendly DIYs that really pack a punch. They're gonna save you a ton of money and you're gonna get a really great looking porch out of it. So I'm gonna quit my gabbing, let's jump into it and let's do some DIYing on a budget. Because why not? Because we can and that's what we do here. Let's get to it. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll want to stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. Alrighty, so jumping into these DIYs, this year Dollar Tree's got these bigger Halloween plaques. They're bigger than any ones that they've ever had before. Yep, I'm going to fill in that hole. Then I'm going to take some of Waverly's Steel. This is a nice gray and yeah, can you tell it's a new bottle? I am so excited that my Walmart did away with the Hello Hobby, brought back the Waverly because it is my absolute favorite. So to this larger DIY decor sign that I'm super excited about when it comes to the size, I'm gonna give it a good base coat with Waverly's Steel. Did I say that? Yeah, I am. Once that base coat is dry, I'm gonna go in with some of this Folk Art Crackle Medium. This is a crackle medium that you can get at Michael's for about six or seven dollars and it's gonna give you that crackle effect. Now you can achieve that same effect using some of Elmer's or any white glue, but since I've got this on hand, I'm gonna use it because I have a few bottles. It does dry a bit quicker than the glue itself. Now when you apply this crackle medium, the thicker the coat you put on, the more of a crackle effect you're gonna get. The lighter the coat, you're gonna get less of a crackle effect. And so for this ghost, I want there to be quite a bit of crackle effect. And so with the base coat, you're gonna choose the base coat that you want those cracks to be. And so that's why I went with the gray. I'm gonna paint my ghost white once this crackle medium cures. Now it does need to cure. You can pop it in the oven for a little bit on a low temperature, say at about 135 if, and that's only if you're comfortable, I'm not telling you to do that, and it'll help it to cure just a bit quicker. Otherwise, it's probably gonna take an hour or two. Once that crackle medium is good and dry, you are then good to go and apply your top coat. Now, when applying this top coat, you don't wanna do too thick of a coat. You don't wanna go over uh, your areas that you've placed paint too many times because for whatever reason this crackle medium really enhances the speed or speeds up the drying process of your paint and so as you're applying it you're gonna see that crackle effect taking effect pretty quickly on if you keep going over it it will then cover up the crackle effect and so you kind of want to do just a couple real quick swipes of paint over it and you know you're not looking for perfection with this because the more imperfect this piece is when you're applying this top coat the more perfect it's going to look and it's going to give it more of that age distressed crackle look that we're going for or that i'm going for i thought it'd be fun to pop in this time lapse just showing you how that crackle effect happens and how quickly this works Look at how cool this ghost is looking. So you'll see again that whatever color you want your cracks to be, 
that's gonna be your base coat. And then the top coat is gonna be the more prominent coat or the more prominent color. Now I'm gonna go in with a stiffer paintbrush and just an ink pad, a black ink pad. And this is one that I got from Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna use it just to kind of outline the edges of my ghost. By doing this, it's adding a bit of shading to it. And when you add shading to a piece like this, it adds depth. And it's just kind of fine tuning your DIY. And it's all those small little details that really enhance your DIY and take it to an, another level. Look for these aluminum words. These are Halloween. You're getting three in a pack. Haunted, spooky, and beware. I was kind of torn between spooky and haunted. In the end, I decided to go with haunted because it was a bit bigger and it was gonna take up more space. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know that when you paint these, it is always best to use a sponge dabber instead of a paintbrush because you are going to get, guess what? Full coverage and just about one coat and you're not gonna get the brush strokes and you're gonna get texture because you're using a sponge dabber. So it is a triple win. Once you've painted uh, your word with the sponge dabber, I find that it is best to transfer my word onto a clean surface, like maybe another piece of plastic that doesn't have the excess paint on, so you don't have to worry about sanding off the excess paint that maybe sticks to the edges. I've had a few of you ask me about that, and that's probably one of those details I forgot to let you in on. Once it's painted here on the back, you know that I like to add dimension. And to do that, I'm just gonna dig into some of my wood beads, use the smaller ones that I don't really much have a use for. And these are gonna be, or work perfectly just for elevating this word up off of my ghost. So to do that, just by taking some hot glue, putting it there on the back of my word and placing those beads, when I place this word onto my ghost, wait for it. It's gonna look so much better than just placing the word flat on to the plaque itself. Again, just adding a small bead back there makes all the difference. On the back of this ghost, I picked up some of these purple LED lights that you can find now at Dollar Tree. They've got them in a few different colors. And so with this, I thought it'd be fun just to add some lighting to the back of my ghost since it's not gonna show, kind of make it glow a bit, give it that spookily feeling. Now, because these are covered in a thicker plastic, I went ahead and switched my hot glue gun from high temperature to low temperature and just putting a bit of glue on these lights, I can then stick them to the back there and they're gonna stay in place, disguising the string or the wire. Now for the battery pack. I am, I'm just gonna place a bit of hot glue there on the back, attaching it to my ghost, giving me the capability of still being able to replace the batteries from year to year. I will tell you, I am one who has been known not to replace the screw back into the cover there of these battery packs, but for whatever reason, I found with the majority of these Halloween ones, the cover doesn't really stay real good on it without it. And so yeah, I am, I'm biting the bullet and I'm putting the screw back in the cover, those pesky little things. And look at that, how stinking cute is that during the day? And let's take a look at it at night. Oh my goodness, I love these, what a fun piece. We've got one more to do. Using this giant size pumpkin jack-o'-lantern DIY plaque that you can get at none other than Dollar Tree right now. Have I told you, I absolutely love the giant size of the plaques this year. I don't know about your Dollar Tree, but I know mine in the past usually stick with the smaller ones. I've never seen the bigger ones. So when I saw them this year, not gonna lie, picked up two of each just to put in my stash. So to this pumpkin, I am going to give it a good base coat using, yep, some of Hello Hobbies pumpkin orange because I have it in my stash and it's only going to be the base coat. Now for this one, I'm gonna switch it up a bit. We're not using the crackle medium. I am using an all new technique that I just learned about, I wanna say last Friday. Last Friday, I was in a mystery box challenge that Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap puts on about every two months. 
And in that challenge, I got to work with Jennifer over at Creative on the Cheap. And when I was watching her unboxing, she used this technique and it is called a salt wash. It is a salt wash paint technique, which adds texture and thickens up your paint or by thickening up your paint. And this was something that when I saw it, I thought, self, you need to try this. I cannot wait to do it. So I did a bit of research and this here is the salt wash paint that you can buy on Amazon. It goes for about 20 or $40, depending on the size container that you get. I decided to dive in a bit more, do a bit more research to see if I could DIY my own. And guess what? I can. I picked up one of these larger glass jars from Dollar Tree. You're gonna need some plaster of Paris. This is about $3 carton and you're gonna get a lot. And so for $3, I feel like you can't beat it. You're also gonna need some coarse kosher salt. Now I poured a bit of plaster in, then layered it with some kosher salt. Then I'm gonna go ahead and give it a stir with a plastic spoon. Now. I'm not gonna tell you measurements of how much of each you need because really the plaster of Paris is what thickens your paint and the kosher salt is what's going to add texture and give it kind of, oh my goodness, I'm gonna say it, that clumpy um, look. And that is a look that is going to look amazing with today's DIY. And so since this is a bigger jar, because I figured, heck, I'm just gonna make a lot so I have it on hand, I'm kind of layering that plaster of Paris, adding some kosher salt, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm being a bit generous with that kosher salt because I really like texture in my DIYs. And so when I saw Jennifer's mystery box challenge and her using this technique, I was just so excited. I couldn't wait to start researching it. Yep, this should last me a while. Let me show you what to do with this. Now I'm showing you this technique or mixing this using some black paint. I'm using a disposable container. Once I've got the amount of paint in the cup that I need, I'm gonna add the plaster of Paris and salt mixture slowly until I achieve the thickness or the consistency that I'm looking for. Now, each paint brand is going to be different because each paint brand is a different consistency. Because I'm using Apple Barrel, it is a bit on the thinner side, so it's gonna take a bit more of this mixture to thicken it up to what it is that I need. A paint like Waverly does not need as much, and so you're not gonna wanna be as generous with that mixture in your paint as I'm being with uh, th this black Apple Barrel paint. Now, once you've got it mixed, you'll see there in my cup that I've got the orange mixed, I am going to take a paint brush and I am not going to use brush strokes to actually apply this. I am going to use a dabbing and patting method to apply this. And you will see that as I do it, that kosher salt and some of that unmixed plaster of Paris is going to add I guess a texture to this piece and that is the whole fun of this. I am super excited about how this is going to turn out and so depending on how thick or how textured you want your piece is going to be how much also that you add to your paint. I wanted to go with my paint being a bit thicker and so yeah this is a pretty thick consistency that you can see in the cup here. It really is up to you. Um, how you want to mix it, but you can see just by dabbing it, we are going to achieve an amazing look. Let me show you what this looks like once it's dry. Wait, before I show you what it looks like when it's dry, I did do the same with uh, the brown paint, adding a bit of uh, that mixture to it because pumpkin stems, well, they're not smooth. Oh my goodness. Can you see how amazing the pumpkin looks? I can't wait to show you this. Let's take a look. I know, right? The excitement is real. Look at what that technique did to this pumpkin. But this pumpkin needs a bit more detailing, so I'm gonna go in with some of Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the color of Walnut Stain. And again, pulling out my 
a stiffer paintbrush that I use for this. And this is where I'm gonna add uh, more dimension, more detailing to this pumpkin just by adding the lines of the ribs that are in a pumpkin. And it's super easy to do. Don't overthink it, just kind of go with it because again, the more imperfect it is, the more, yes, perfect it'll be. And to finish this piece off, I am going to add some shading to the edges, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth as well. Oh my word, I am loving this piece. Look at the texture that that technique added to this. So much character and personality. The shading for the rib lines on the pumpkin are nowhere near perfect, but they're perfect for me. And I am loving this piece. Now, to hang these pieces on my ladder, I don't think I showed you before, but I do add a thicker jute cord as a hanger. Now, I know that there is some excess string on here, but that's because everybody's ladder is going to be a different size and how you want your piece to hang on your ladder matters. And so the hanger isn't always going to be the right size because your pieces are different sizes. Whoa, that was a lot, right? And so I like to take my piece over to my ladder along with the string and kind of hold the string up with my piece to see how much string I actually need to glue on as to where my piece is gonna hang on my ladder. I know I'm a perfectionist. On the back side of this, because Dollar Tree had some of those orange LED lights, I thought that these would be perfect to add to this as well. We can't have one piece light up and not the other. Yeah, see how perfect it's hanging? I love this piece during the day and at night. There is still one more part to this ladder and I didn't really wanna DIY it because Dollar Tree has these fun skeleton garlands out. And I just thought that since it's a smaller area and usually I add a banner or a garland to the bottom of my ladder, I thought this would be perfect just by kind of removing them because they were spaced out a bit too much adding that thicker twine and a ton of hot glue. With these, I glued it to the front and then on the back, I went ahead and just reinforced it with more glue on the back of each of the necks of these skeletons. And yeah, this was perfect for that bottom piece. And there we have it. What a cute, fun piece. I should have maybe added lights to those as well, but here is the ladder in its entirety during the day and at night. Now this is my second Halloween ladder. Last year, I did a version for 2022. Let's take a look at that porch ladder. Alrighty, jumping on into these DIYs, I'm gonna start this first one off with one of these round blank plaques. Thank goodness Crafter Square got smart and came out with these because it's a blank canvas. But with this blank canvas comes these pesky holes that you all know I don't like. So I'm gonna take some spackling. This is a quick dry spackling. So as soon as this pink turns to white, it is good and dry. You're free to sand it just like I did here. I initially thought that I was gonna go the route of painting this plaque. That was why I filled in those pesky holes, but then decided to go a different route. So to this plaque, I am going to add a nice generous coat of some Mod Podge because I'm gonna add some burlap to it. This is a burlap that you can get at just about any craft store, any Walmart, and you can buy it by the yard. That's what I like to do because I've noticed that Dollar Tree hasn't had it in stock lately. Once I lay that burlap down onto my plaque, I am gonna go in with a second coat of Mod Podge to really adhere it down and stiffen up that burlap because by stiffening up that burlap, it's gonna keep it from fraying when we cut off the excess burlap. It is best to wait until that Mod Podge and burlap are fully dry before you cut off the excess burlap. The best way to do that is to use one of these razors here with a fresh blade. Using the plaque itself as a guide, you're gonna get some nice, clean, perfect edges that are free of fraying. Using some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of maize. I'm gonna give this burlap a good coating of this paint. This is hands down one of my favorite yellows. I feel like a good yellow is hard to come by. And while this isn't too bright, this isn't too dark, it's a very subtle yellow, and well, I just love it. So there is my Waverly Maze uh, tangent. Anyway, 
why am I painting this burlap when I could have just painted the plaque itself yellow? Well, because I am a firm believer that adding texture to a DIY makes a huge difference. I feel like adding texture kind of fine tunes a DIY, takes it to an, another level. And so that's why I like to do it. If you don't wanna add texture, you can skip this burlap part and just go straight to the painting your plaque with maize, if that's the yellow you wanna use. There is a theme to these DIYs, these Halloween DIYs that I'm bringing to you today, and it is that of the candy corn theme. But with that, I felt like I needed to incorporate some black because black is kind of the signature color for Halloween, and I feel like it's gonna add that extra oomph that these DIYs need. So the best way I felt to incorporate the black into this DIY was through Stitching, yes, my infamous stitching. I love stitching. Now, this is an optional part of this DIY. If stitching isn't for you, I say don't do it, but stitching is definitely for me. I feel like it finishes off the DIY nicely, and so, yes, I add it to my DIYs. A lot of them, in fact. To this DIY, I will be using one of these galvanized welcome words. Can I just tell you how happy I am that there are no more holes in these metal words? I'm gonna be painting this with some of Hello Hobby's pumpkin orange. And to this orange, I'm gonna add just a bit of this Hello Hobby brown, just to kind of mute it up a bit and make it a bit more rustic. I'm gonna say the easiest way to paint any of these galvanized words or pieces from Dollar Tree is to use a sponge dabber and be generous with your paint. You're gonna get nice full coverage in just about one to two coats versus using a paintbrush. You're gonna get those brush strokes and it's gonna take several coats to achieve full coverage. So trust me when I say use a sponge dabber, you'll be a happy camper and it's gonna get the job done in just a couple of seconds. Once I got a couple of good coats of the orange on, I did go in and add some stitching, surprise, surprise. To the back of this, I'm gonna add some of these wood square beads that you can get at Dollar Tree by Crafter Square. Now these are a smaller bead. They're gonna fit perfect on the back of these. Why am I putting these beads on the back of this word? Because I wanna elevate this word up off the plaque and give it some dimension. Again, this is another one of those things when adding dimension along with texture, it really takes your DIY to the next level. Witching gears, I'm using one of these new pumpkins. This is a galvanized pumpkin. This is new to Dollar Tree this year. I am loving all these fun new galvanized pieces that Crafter Square is adding to the holiday lines. These have holes, pesky holes. I don't want holes in them. Easy fix, I'm gonna take just a piece of tape I'm using masking tape. I'm gonna cover the holes on the back side of the plaque, whichever side is the back side to you. This is the back side for me. And like I said, because this is a themed project, you're gonna see some repetition in this. This pumpkin, this is the perfect orange for this pumpkin. Now you will see that as I dab the paint on, because of where I put the tape, it's going to paint the tape in turn, filling in the hole somewhat with paint, making it less noticeable. Kind of a cool little hack there. And repeat. And on the back of this piece as well, I am going to add some of Dollar Tree's wooden cubes again because i am going for dimension for this piece right now you can find these cool orange led lights they've got them in orange green and purple i thought i would just put a light dot of glue now my glue gun is on low temperature it is not on high temperature and these led lights kind of have a wax coating around the bulb itself which makes it perfect for adding hot glue because it's not going to damage the light I do suggest putting just a dot of low temperature hot glue right in that area just to hold it in place. And I did that using the whole strand, adding lights to each of the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. How fun is that? So it's not only dimensional, but it lights up. What a fun feature to add to a piece like this. My favorite part of every DIY, finally putting it together, all the pieces that we've DIY'd, 
to then make one really amazing piece. To that plaque, yep, my pumpkin and my welcome word are just going to be hot glued onto this. Onto the back of this plaque, I'm just gonna hot glue the battery box on, allowing me the capability of still changing the battery in and out. Now, because there really is no way around hiding the wiring to the LED lights, unless you wanna drill a hole in the plaque, maybe where the pumpkin is, for the most part, I think not a lot of people are gonna do that. And so I just decided to kind of paint it the same color as my plaque, disguising it. This is the perfect way to add some black to this DIY. So I'm gonna add a black raffia bow instead of a twine bow. And on the back side, because this is going to be one DIY that I add to my Halloween ladder, I'm gonna use, again, the black raffia as a hanger just by gluing it onto the back of the plaque. With that, look at that, the top DIY for my porch decor ladder. I am loving this. I didn't take pictures at night, but I did bring it in the house where it was dark and you can see just how fun those lights are and what they add to the piece itself. Next up, dug into my craft stash of Dollar Tree plaques. This is a very old one. It really is just for the shape. You can see that I filled in the holes because with this plaque, I am painting it and yes, I don't want holes in it. So with this plaque, I am going with just a basic black matte chalk paint. This one is by Waverly and I'm gonna give this a good couple coats of that paint. And along with that plaque for this DIY, I'm gonna be using this trick or treat word plaque. These are so fun and just DIYing them is easy to do once you fill in, yes, those holes, those pesky, pesky holes. Did I tell you what the theme of these DIYs is? Of course I did. It's candy corn theme which means the colors are white, orange, and yellow. And so to this plaque, I'm gonna do trick in white, because that's the top color of a candy corn, isn't it? Of course it is. And in the center there, I went with the rustic orange where that footage is. I'm not quite sure, but you see what I'm doing here. And at the bottom, I'm gonna go in with that maize yellow. I did, I did stitching on this and let me just tell you, it took me an hour to do. Now, if you wanna use a Sharpie to do the stitching, you can, might be easier than paint, but since I had the paint out and I've got a paintbrush, I just went that route to the back of this sign. Yep, you see what I'm doing. I'm adding some of those handy wood blocks and those wood blocks, because they tend to show, I did paint them the same color as the plaque itself, which was black just to kind of disguise them so not much attention is drawn to them. I will tell you that after I got this painted, I did just put some glue on these wood blocks and glued it to the black plaque here. I don't know what happened to the footage there, but it was really basic and you can see the end result. It is stinking adorable. The last DIY for this plaque, but not the last one for this video, I'm gonna be using these fun wall decor pieces. Three come on a set. I wanted to use two of the pumpkins and one of the skulls for this. These again, would you look at the amount of holes on these? Now, if I sound like a broken record, it's probably cause I am, but if you were just to paint these pieces without filling it in, it's gonna look unfinished. It's gonna look like these pieces are missing something. And so I do suggest filling in the holes. It is worth taking the time to do that because it really is going to make your piece look a bit more finished and a bit more high end. And so yes, filling these in. And when I fill in my pieces, I really fill them in the night before the day I'm gonna DIY. So that way when I go to sit down and DIY, I can just keep moving and painting and creating and not waiting for spackling to dry. So with these, yep, the skull is gonna get a good coating of some white chalk paint. And my word, is it strike three and I'm out yet? Wow, my camera was really zoomed in on this. But nonetheless, you can see that I painted both those adorable pumpkins, my rustic orange. And heck, since I'm on a roll, let me just show you the raffia that I'm using that I've already used in the previous DIYs. 
This is a bundle that you can get at just about any craft store. You can even find it sometimes at Target in their bins, which is a great buy. I'm gonna use this to make a banner, the banner, the hanging banners that I like to make and attach my skull and pumpkins to. And of course, you can see the repetition. I am a creature of habit. Each of these pieces has the stitching because I feel like without it, it would have just been a white skull and it didn't add any character to it. But with that stitching, yes, it finishes it off perfectly. I tell you, I'm determined to convert some of you to stitchers, those of you who are non-stitchers. And to the back of these pieces, oh yes, they needed lights too and each of the eyes. And because these LED lights come with 10 lights, it was perfect to add to these. I just kind of disguised the rest of the lights that I didn't need, adding more glow to this piece. But what a fun way to add lighting to these, right? To each of the eyes. And with that, our third and final DIY for the ladder. And how cute is this? Again, this is the piece during the day. And look at how it illuminates at night. Oh my goodness. Now with this piece, I did attach the battery pack to the ladder itself with just some Velcro. And here we have it. Such a fun decor piece, this rustic ladder. I love it because it is an interchangeable decor piece, allowing me the capability of interchanging each of the DIYs, each of the three DIYs on this ladder for each of the holidays, the seasons, or the non-holidays and seasons. Here it is during the day, and this is what it looks like lit up at night, or in the dark, because it wasn't night. But you see it, isn't it adorable? Here we have 2022's candy corn theme ladder and 2023's spookily ghost and pumpkin ladder. Which one do you like better? I think if I were to do this year's differently, I would change the skeletons at the bottom so they stand out a bit more, maybe give them a touch of some white paint or the glow paint on top of the white paint. I feel like that would have been a better twist to those. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? Well, it's going out to Davida Mitchell, who's bringing to us her recreation of my Dollar Tree DIY Arrow Halloween wall decor piece. Davida, thank you so much for sharing your recreation with us today. How fun are these pieces? Dollar Tree wood DIY plaques are absolutely one of my favorite things to create with because they are so easy to DIY. These plaques turned out amazing. I might be a little obsessed with salt wash now. Thank you, Jennifer, at a little bit of calm and crazy. It is definitely adding some of that texture and dimension into my DIYs, which is something I am super into doing. I hope you all enjoyed today's Halloween porch decor DIYs. If you're looking for more DIY inspiration, well, guess what? You can click on the video right over here and it'll take you to some of my past favorites. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy. But most of all, you know what I'm gonna say. Stay positive, please, because I am. Bye for now, everybody.